Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to a video for EVE Vanguard. Yes, First Strike is here and many people are now getting their first taste of what EVE Vanguard is all about. This of course is CCP's new first person shooter set in the universe of EVE Online. Now I've played this a fair amount, I was lucky enough to be one of the first people in the world outside of the development team to play this at FanFest, I played a couple of tests since then and now we have First Strike. So I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to jump in and showcase what the hell is going on, give you some tips and tricks for this first strike event, just so you know what you're doing. Now I need to preface this with two big warnings. One, I keep getting kicked out of first strike today, it disconnects me fairly frequently, so do be prepared, I'm probably going to cut numerous times throughout this video, I have to reload in and continue where I left off, it could be a little bit messy, but I'm going to give it my best and give it my all. Second thing to note is, I'm not good at first person shooters, like, at all. Like, I have the technical knowledge, I just don't have the actual skills involved. I'm not particularly twitchy or accurate with a mouse. So, we're gonna work through this together, right? Now, before you jump in to the first strike event, it should be noted there are a couple of steps you're going to have to take. The first is you will need to download the updated launcher for EVE Online. And if you're already using the launcher, make sure you close it down and then open it up again and it should give you the opportunity to download Vanguard and jump in. I'll put a link to how to download the new launcher in the description below as well. Once you've got the launcher downloaded, once Vanguard is downloaded and installed with easy anti-cheat and all that kind of thing, jump straight in. It'll ask you to do the whole Infomorph configuration, obviously like Infomorph from the whole, uh, like your different clones in EVE Online. You create a name for yourself and do feel free to add me as Captain Benzie and invite me to games if you happen to see me online. This will of course be the name I use when we go live as well. Once you've got this, we can hit enter. From the main screen when this loads, you have the option to join random squads where it'll find two random people for you. You can click on invite and either add favorites or you can search for people by their name. You just type in a name, hit search and they'll come up on here and you can invite them in if you're inviting friends from say Discord or whatever. Or like now, like I'm going to do now, you can just go in solo by readying up. Like with most first person shooters, once you've got your party of two or three people, once you click ready, once everyone is ready, it will go through the matchmaking and drop you into Carrion, which is apparently a planet in the Genesis region. Now once you land, I do recommend familiarizing yourself very quickly with the controls. You've got Q there to change between your ammo types, R to reload, of course we've got our usual shift to sprint, left control to duck, that kind of thing. The important ones that I don't think necessarily a lot of people are aware of is if you hold tab you get your minimap. This is really useful, you do have to hold tab for it though, and it takes a second to come up, which I quite like. You can use M to pull up a full map, which can then be dragged around, and you can middle mouse click to set waypoints around on this, which will then show up here on your heads up display. It is worth noting, however, that the map here, you can't close it with escape. It's kind of annoying and it's something I do hope they change. If you hit M, you have to press M again to close it. Escape takes you to your settings here, so you can change your graphics settings and some of your other keybinds and things like that. In the bottom right, you have your shields and your health. Shields recharge over time, health does not. You need to use biomass to replenish health by using the three key by default. That will allow you to replenish your health, and if you have enough biomass when you die, you can reclone and come back in. Obviously right click aim down sights, left click shoot. You should know most of the first person shooting stuff by now. I still find myself running around and wanting to slide like I'm playing Apex Legends, but there we go. Other unusual bits, if we open up crafting with Z, you get these bits here. You're probably going to want to craft some ammo pretty much straight off. Crafting goes whilst you are moving around. Whilst I'm still moving now in the bottom left, you can see I'm still crafting those energy rounds. Really useful. You can be crafting whilst moving so you don't have to stand around and wait for all that to happen. I opens your inventory, this will tell you any items that you've picked up, keys, that kind of thing will all showcase up in here. You can drop items and things like this as well, like you have various different bits and pieces. Um, and most importantly, I think is the big one here, is your caps lock key opens up your contracts panel. Now the contracts panel then gives you the three missions that are currently available for you. You can move around while doing this as well, by the way, and you can have a look at what these mean. If I press one, two or three on the keyboard, it will open up these and give us an idea. 
So in Rhodes, craft a decryptor key utility item, use it to hijack six terminals. Whale fall, craft four relay unit utility items and deploy them onto salvage tower rockets. And three is retrieve three network intercepts from locked data banks and bring them to the designated data relay. Now, if you're not sure what any of these mean, and to be fair, you're early into Vanguard, why would you? Basically, when it says craft, we're going to close this down just to have a look at this, open up crafting, and we can go into contract utilities. And you can hear, see here what we need for a relay unit, what we need for decryptor key, this kind of thing here. So you're going to need to scavenge these items to do those in order to do the missions. If I go back here, you'll see there are different payments for each of these. I quite like blue boxing. Retrieve three network intercepts from locked data banks and bring them to the designated data relay. Now, whoever is your squad leader can assign this for the whole squad. So talk on comms, figure out which one you want to do. Then you press F to accept contract. And there it is in the top left now. Blue boxing. Network intercepts delivered zero out of three. Network intercepts in memory storage currently zero. Now we can have a look around at things. Ultimately, if I open the map, you often get these little circles here that tell you where you need to be going. So I can kind of drop a little marker there using the middle mouse button just to let me know where I'm going. There we are, that's me pressing escape rather than the key. Cool. So we're going to come through now and we're going to start moving in and seeing what we can find. And of course, it is worth sometimes using tab just to keep an eye on what may be around you. Use your ADS, that is uh, aim down sights. When you are doing this and looking around, anything that appears sort of in that hexagon, that sort of elongated hexagon, if there's an enemy, they will show up red, which makes them a little bit easier to spot. If I can give one huge tip with Vanguard, it's not to do what I'm doing now and go rushing headlong in. Take your time, explore, look around, watch out for signs like this. Clearly there you can see there are some people in the distance, there were some red dots there as well. They are right in the direction I'm going, but I would ideally like to scavenge for some more materials. And yeah, try not to run through the fire, fire hurts. I've just lost my shields and five health. You'll see the shields do recharge. Oh, turret. Okay, we're going to get into cover because that's going to really hurt. And I'm actually going to swap to EM rounds because EM rounds are slightly better against turrets. Right here, we've got some nanites here. There's that turret. As I said, I am not particularly good at this game, but I've totally done this right just to show you how to heal. So the shields will recharge over time, but I need to hold three to heal. You see that bar fills up and you get some health back and it uses some biomass in order to achieve that. Now, obviously, having just shot something, I'll have given my position away. And of course, I get disconnected again. Great times. And we're back. No, I don't know why it does that. It just seems to be one of those things that keeps happening. I'm assuming it's just part of the test, though not a lot of my friends are having this same issue, which is really irritating for me when I'm trying to showcase the game. I've tried different graphics settings. I've obviously restarted my router. I've kind of done everything you would expect to want to do in this kind of scenario to try and get the game more stable. It just doesn't seem to be working for me, which is awesome because it means I'm constantly going back and forward, basically restarting the match. And there we are, we've got some enemies to shoot at. Obviously, when people are up close as well, you can use V to, shoot, uh, to melee them if that's your thing. It does save on the ammo a little bit. There's still someone out there somewhere. There they are. As you can see, my ability to shoot is absolutely atrocious. I am not good at this kind of game, but I enjoy them anyway. Why won't you die? Seriously. That's a whole team. And I'm out of ammo. Cool. So while we're running away, let's start building some more kinetic ammo and try and get some distance between us and those guys shooting at me because being shot at, not fun. Are they chasing? Are they pulling back? I think those are probably NPCs. Cool, we can reload. We can move back in. My shields are back up. You can see in the bottom right, I am, however, quite badly wounded with only 40 health left. Ideally, I would should really just avoid these guys and go away, but where's the fun in that? I think one of those bullets hit. And I'm on 10 ammo again. Oh, beautiful. And I'm out of resources. 
where are those bodies? Because I could do with their biomass. There's the other guy there. How am I not hitting him, but he's hitting me? Like, that doesn't seem fair. Do I have any EM ammo? No, I do not have EM ammo. Yeah, I could really do with some resources here. Or I can try and run in and melee this guy because reasons, right? Yeah, we're going to try that. We're going to run in and just melee this guy in the face. When I can find him. There we go. Now I'm going to heal up. No, I'm not. I'm going to die. Something's going to shoot me while I'm low health and I die. So yeah, don't do that. Take your time. Explore. Look around. I am going to, however, hit the reclone here because I'm quite enjoying this map. I've got a mission up and available with the blue boxing there. Let's see if we can do some of that before we disconnect again. So where are we? Open up the map. We're over this side this time. There we are. We're going to head straight for this spot here. Close the map down. 270 meters. That's not too far. Fifth of a kilometer to get in. Let's have a little look around. I do ideally want to try and showcase... Oh, look, some more combat. As I said, really, really not good at this. Fortunately, the NPCs aren't too bad. There we are. Now, once you've downed an NPC, you can claim their biomass. Oh, that's a player, I think, that one. Oh, it's a box like that. <laughs> Elon Musk. Yeah, those are player names, basically. So you can look for these boxes and grab biomass out of them, if there's any in them. May have been looted by other players, like some of these have been. Because obviously anything that you drop and you leave behind, other players can pick up. And there's another disconnect. Okay, and I am finally back in again. Let's have a look and see if I can give you guys a few more tips. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, defeat Vanguard of Mordor's Legion forces. Nope, retrieve 30 electronic parts and deliver them to field repository. There we are. Let's have a look at this one. So similar to the other one we just saw. When we look at this, these kind of missions, you'll see that on the map, you start to get those little circles normally telling you where things are. Now, what if it doesn't have circles? What if, like this, you're not actually getting anything from that contract? Well, it's because these bits of loot can be dropped anywhere. In the case here of the electronic parts, they can just be found in any of the loot boxes. Where do you deposit them? Well, that's what these little icons are here. These little sort of squares, these targeting systems, those are your deposits. You pick up loot, you drop them in there, and off you go. It should also be noted in your crafting menu, under equipment, you have a signal beacon. Crafting one of these is very, very useful because that's what's going to allow you to actually get off the battlefield at the end of things here. And I'm being shot at while I'm trying to explain stuff. That's always nice. I'm shooting someone. Don't know who they were shooting at. Clearly someone else around, but... Now the question, was that a player? Yes, it was! Saiyan Pirate Vegeta. Sorry, just grabbing your stuff there. Shooting at me while I'm trying to make a video. Seriously, come on now. Anyway, you can also use your audio to listen out for footsteps. That's usually a big clue that there's people nearby, right? Um... But essentially, look at your missions, figure out what it is you need to do, use your map to figure out where it is you need to go, and then kind of do it. I mean, don't take it too seriously in the case of like seeing how many missions you can do and desperately trying to extract and all that. This is just a bit of fun right now. Like None of this progress, as far as I'm aware, is going to continue over. So like, you may as well just enjoy the test, have a bit of fun, shoot some people, die a lot. Come back in, have another go. Yeah, I can hear a load of gunshots in that nearby. Also, look out for green icons like this. There we are, we can loot those for some credits and bits and bobs. I can also hear that there's a turret up there, so let's grab some energy rounds. 
We're just going to wait for those to go, because energy rounds seem to be much better at killing turrets than kinetic rounds. Yep, there it is. That's a turret there. Three, two, one. And now we swap to energy rounds. In case that turret comes back online. Doesn't look like it's going to, so we can go a little bit further in. We're looking for loot fields, basically, at this point for this particular mission I'm on. Basically, if you don't have actual circles on your map, look for loot fields. They're, they're your, where you're going to be heading. So where's my closest loot site? There it is. Middle mouse click that. I'm going the wrong way, because of course I am. Anyone out around here? No. Take your time. Explore. Hello. Yeah, I see you. I think you can actually loot those for parts. Or we can just shoot these guys and... Oh, hello! Yeah, do check that you've killed everyone before, you know, you start looting looting bits. Because otherwise you just kind of get shot in the backside whilst you're trying to loot, and that's not fun. There we are, mining depot deposit. Some cool loot there, bits and bobs. Let's have a look at that. Does that appear in the inventory? Yeah, well, you can see we've got our electronic parts there in the inventory. Those are what we need for this mission. I need 30 electronic parts. I'm currently sitting on four. So we need some more loot around. Actually, let's go to this loot site over here and hope that we can make it. God, this game is so beautiful. Hello, I hear you. Oh, no, you can't loot them. Ignore me. You can't loot turrets. Hello. Got some enemies around here. Which I can't hit for shit. Like, people don't believe me when they when I tell them I am really bad at first person shooters. Where'd you go? There's one more. And I'm down. Perfect time to end the video there, I think. Hopefully that's given you some tips and tricks and what to expect from me, Vanguard and how to get on with it. Biggest one that I can give is honestly looking at your contracts and actually, you know, um, going through those and selecting them. They are the entire point of the game, right? And I think a lot of people have been jumping in and not really knowing about those. I do actually quite like this page here as well. It gives us a lot of interesting information about how well you've done, what you've killed, what kind of damage you've taken, what kind of damage you've done players you've shot at. So here we are saying Pirate Vegeta, that's another player. All of these others, if they're numbered and things like that, grunts, soldiers, workers, those are NPCs. So you can kind of get an idea of what you're doing and what you're up to. And there we are, Gomerich, that's the guy I assume just killed me at the end there. Oops. Anyway, well, guys, thank you very much for watching this one right the way through to the end. Let me know what you're thinking of, how you're enjoying Vanguard so far. What have you been up to? What is the best story you can tell of the first strike event in Vanguard? I'm just really hoping it gets a little bit more stable for me so I can actually stay playing it for more than 5-10 minutes at a time. I'd like to get a full match in, perhaps with some of the guys from Catskull. Like I did jump in this morning with some friends and got kicked out after like 2-3 minutes, jumped back in and suddenly can't rejoin them because you can't rejoin a match in progress once you've been disconnected. I assume that's something we'll see fixed once it gets to live. I also will eventually, because I've already got a lot of thoughts, I've got a piece of pen and pen, well, not a piece of paper and a pen next to me, I've got my phone next to me, that I'm making notes about all of this as I go, what I'm enjoying and what has changed since I first played this back in September. And it's a lot. 
So I'm really impressed with the amount of work that's been done in two months so far, and I'm keen to talk about my thoughts and opinions of this with you all after the test is over. In the meantime, I'm going to be trying to get some footage, trying to showcase some fun firefights and how much I suck at this, and hopefully you'll be enjoying that as well. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching right the way through to the end of this one. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden on the ground. <laughs>